Wednesday, the 5th of January 2017. Greetings and welcome to today's United Kingdom Talk. We've done a couple of lovely live shows over the last couple of days, haven't we? We've had phone calls. It's really a real pleasure talking to, to real people on the end of the phone. Hello. Is there anyone there? They keep sending out signals into space like that, don't they? They're trying to find the aliens. Yes, with long ears and green faces and things like that. I wonder what aliens would look like. Actually, you're probably watching this thinking, well, <laughs> that Chris looks like one, don't you? You're thinking that, aren't you? I know you are, yes. Uh, some messages from yesterday, bo yesterday's show, boys and girls. Uh, Simon says, I do the jokes, mister. There is not enough jokes. Uh, there is not enough on this show for two joke tellers. Me and Mr. Chop. I don't tell jokes, dear. I don't tell jokes. This is real life, what I do. I don't make up anything. You know, when I'm like, I, I don't know, when I tell you about my stomach problems, that's not made up, dear. It's, it's not a joke. Are you sitting there laughing at my stomach? How rude are you? God's sake, we've got enough people batting us down all the time, haven't we? Oh, you're fat, your radio shows are rubbish, all that business. We've got enough people batting us down for you to start as well, dear. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, Simon reckons he and I are going to be the new Ant and Deck and are taking over the Saturday night takeaway show. No. No, we don't do doubles, I'm afraid. I don't do double headers. I've tried it before, like, um, uh, not not in an interview sense, not in a, um, how can you put this? Not in a come along and join in for a show. But I, I can't do, I, I, I find it very difficult to, to do, like, say, a radio show or something with another person. You would think it would be easier, wouldn't you? Uh, probably is for some people. For me, no. So won't be any double acts, I'm afraid, dear. No double acts, no. And you've got to be reliable. Are you reliable? So I'm sure you are reliable. Some people, <coughs> not reliable, you know, so you couldn't, I couldn't do that, no. Uh, he says, oh, hang on, my mistake. Chris is eating their takeaways on Sunday nights. See? See, you're talking about, on oh, my Saturday nights, you're talking about my weight again. I hardly have, actually, I hardly have any takeaways, believe it or not, Simon. Are you a takeaway, ma'am? Chinese. Oh, no, I couldn't be eating Chinese. Oh, no. Oh, God, no. I, yes, I have tried it. Don't be one of those people. Oh, you'd like it if you tried it. No, I don't like Chinese food. Vile stuff. Oh, no, 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 no. If it's got to, if I, if you take me out for a meal, it's got to involve potatoes. It's got to involve baked beans or carrots, or peas, or something like that. None of this... No, Chinese, dear. No. The only foreign food I eat is pizzas and spaghetti bolognese. That's fair. Don't mind a little bit of an Italian. If you know one, please send one round immediately. Thank you, Simon. Uh, Jeff says, flaxseed, which we were talking about yesterday, is the American term for what we call linseed, as in linseed oil. So I didn't know that. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Elaine says, great talking to you yesterday on the phone. Thanks so much for your advice. I'm a little less nervous now. Yeah, it's all about all about working out sort of roughly what you want to say. You don't have to work because Elaine's doing a little radio show in Israel. In, uh, in about three weeks' time. And she's playing all Barry Manilow music. And I said, uh, always good to prepare. You don't have to write down, like, word for word. I mean, you can if you want to. You could you could work out exactly what you're going to say and read it word for word. I think some people do actually do that. Or you can just kind of write down that exit line, the last line you want to say before you play the next record. And, and that, that would do me anyway. Uh, oh. There goes the clock. Oh, it's 12 o'clock. We're recording at 12 o'clock in the afternoon today. Hello to my sister Sharon, who says, try genius bread, which is gluten-free, wheat-free, milk-free. That is nice. No, I've tried that, Sharon. Don't like it. No, it's a bit powdery. Bit powdery. Not keen on that one. And uh, Ray Reynolds says, Merry Wednesday yesterday. Well, that was yesterday, Ray. We've moved on now, dear. Do try and keep up with the rest of us, Ray, dear. Thank you very much. I went out for a walk. I meant to tell you um, last night, actually, on Tuesday night after we finished the show, which I think I think finished about 11 o'clock at night. And uh, I, 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 once I started sending it out, I didn't know what to do with myself. So I went out for a walk Tuesday night, you know, midnight. I go for a walk and I'm out for about an hour and I walk right around. Do you know, I didn't see a single person. Now, the odd thing is sometimes driving down uh, the roads sort of around here late at night when I'm coming back from work 
uh, during the uh, karaoke DJ or quiz night that I do, um, sometimes I quite often see foxes. Don't see any when you're walking around. Isn't that strange? Do you think they hear us coming and they run off? A fox is scared of us. They're such lovely creatures. I want to pick one up and cuddle one. I might have to give it forced cuddles like I do to my cat sometimes. She has forced cuddles. That's when she meows and meows and meows. Eventually I pick her up and for a moment she's okay. And then she starts struggling to get down and I hold her there. Forced cuddles, that's called. Be nice, not nasty. Be nice, but give her those strokes and kisses on the side of her face. I love the feel of the whiskers against my, my, um, my lips. Do you like that? Does anyone do that? Does anyone kiss their cat passionately? Or oh, not like not like that. Oh no. Something very wrong about that. <laughs> Thanks everyone for your messages. Okay, boys and girls. Um I did have a look in the sky. I think it again it was either Monday or Tuesday night this week. And there was a very, very bright object. Did you notice it? It was just down sort of to the right of the moon. So if the moon's here, it was kind of down there. Every, it was actually brighter than the moon, obviously much smaller, but it, it really was ever so bright. And I was convinced that this was the comet that I was talking about that was going to appear on on the, on Christmas night. I thought, oh, that must be still the comet hanging around. Anyway, like an idiot, I rung my, um, uh, my neighbour, Dave, who lives next door, because he's into, he likes taking photographs of wild, he's ever such a quiet man, lovely chap. You couldn't wish for a better neighbour, actually, or neighbours, all of them along here. You, you really couldn't. None of us are noisy. None of us leave rubbish everywhere. We're, we're all sort of, you know, respectful of each other. Well, uh, you know, that's just how we are. And um, uh, he likes taking photos of wildlife. He, he's often got pictures of little birds that have been in his garden because he's got a nice garden. They've got two ponds in the garden. Uh, ne next to my house and it attracts all sorts of wildlife and you've got uh, birds and he's got fish in there and a great big heron sometimes you see that sitting there hoping hoping to grab one of the fishes <laughs> in Dave's in Dave's in one of Dave's ponds and he's got frogs and the frogs occasionally come over to my garden as well isn't that fab and you have to be so careful with the lawnmower dear you really do. You don't know where those frogs are hiding. Oh dear, another one gone. <laughs> do they have green blood frog frogs? Or is that just Vulcans? Vulcans have green blood, don't they? What about frogs? Do they have green blood? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, sometimes when I'm doing my garden, actually not in the grass, but oh yes, actually yes in the grass. When they're very, very tiny, sometimes I find the little frogs in my grass. I mean, obviously, you can't go over the whole lawn checking, you know, individually combing the blades of grass, looking for the frogs just in case they are <coughs> sucked up into the into the deadly lawnmower. <laughs> no, but sometimes when I'm when I'm in my plant kind of plant patch, I don't know what you'd call it, where I've got lots of, it's not a vegetable patch, it's all plants and flowers. Sometimes there I might be cutting something there and there underneath a leaf will be, will be a fairly large frog. So that's quite nice, isn't it? And they eat all the, frogs are very good, they eat all the insects. And more importantly, they don't bite you. If you touch their bums, they jump. <laughs> try that, for, next time you see me, try that for me. Touch my bum and see if I jump somewhere. Like a frog, ribbit, ribbit. Ribbit, 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 yes. Anyway, so back to that. So, um, as I say, I rung my dad. He said, oh, I'll go out and have a look. And a, a little bit later in the car, he texted me. And um, uh, uh, I, I read it when I got to work. I don't read text when I'm driving along. I heard it go off. Doo, 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 doo. Well, it doesn't. I've got the London Weekend. Perhaps you'd like to hear it. One moment, please. London Weekend. I've got the London Weekend television uh, ident or jingle as my um, text message noise. Just a moment. Let's see if I can play. It's a lovely little tune, boys and girls. Are you ready? Are you ready? Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, no music. Oh, there we are. Sorry, I haven't turned the speaker up. One moment, please. Let's go back to that. So whenever I get a text on my answer phone, I hear this. <laughs> Oh, no, it doesn't sound like that. That's the wrong one. Just a moment. Let me try another one. This might be better. No, that's not right either. Let's try. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, I can't find it now. Try one more. One more. That's it. The one with the...
with the drums. Every time... <laughs> oh, shut up! Every time I get a text... Shut up! What's going on with this now? Every time I get a text message, I get that, that little sound. Isn't that lovely? Anyway, so I heard it go off, and then when I got to work, I had a look. And Dave said, unfortunately, not the comet. It was just boring old Venus. So I was so disappointed. Mind you, I did say that you needed a pair of binoculars to see... Oh, I've got itchy back. Uh, you, you needed a pair of binoculars to um, to actually see the comet. And I was able to see this, this very, very bright Venus, it turns out to be, with the naked eye. Oh, yes. Yes, I am the new... Uh, what's his name? Moore. Who was that bloke now? Patrick Moore. Patrick Moore, the great astronomer. Yes. Right, some stuff here in the papers this morning, in the Daily Mail. And I have to say, I totally agree with this. It says, bloody disgusting, outraged customer post pictures of women shopping in Tesco's in their pyjamas. I mean, what the hell's all that about? Doesn't anyone have any decorum anymore? And can you go shopping in your pyjamas? It's bad enough when the students are doing it. You see the students doing it sometimes, don't you? Walking around in pyjamas. Anyway, she's had a backlash because people are taking photographs of strangers. What? What? God, dear. an outraged Tesco customer demanded that people wearing pyjamas be banned from the shop after they snapped two women, two, in the same day, in the same shopping session, uh, browsing groceries in their dressing gowns. This woman branded the shop as bloody disgusting, and I totally agree with her, uh, when he posted the picture of the women swanning down an aisle. <laughs> I love that word, swanning. Do you, do, you, do you walk or do you swan? That's the question. Swanning down the aisle in the uh, chain's Salford store in Manchester. Oh, well, I'm not surprised then, dear. Salford. Have you been to Salford? The BBC moved there. Have you been? At what a dump. What a dump for Christ's sake. My mate runs a radio station there. Tame size, right? Tame size radio. I think that's in Salford. I'm not sure. Oh, it's quite near there anyway. God, you don't want to go. Don't take your car down there. My God, there's nothing left on the car by the time you've gone down one of those streets. Anyway, it goes on. They were in this place in pink nightwear and slippers. How disgusting. However, others did not share Mr. Cook's feelings, this is the bloke, and shamed him for taking photos of strangers, minding their own business. No, it's, I think it's disgusting. How can you go... Please don't tell me that you go shopping in your pyjamas. Mind you, I reckon Simon, one of our regular viewers, would do that. They don't have any of that in Waitrose, dear. In fact, the ladies actually do themselves up beautifully when they go shopping in Waitrose. They've got the best clothes, especially in the Wokingham branch. Oh, yes, makeup on, lovely coats or, 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 or little outfits they come. And that is their day out. A day trip to Waitrose. I mean, where else? So much better than one of those tacky old little parks like Thorpe Park or something like that. Why would you want to go to Thorpe Park when you can spend an afternoon in Waitrose? That is the question. Huh? But honestly, I mean, it's, as I say, the students, OK, they, they, they don't really know any better, do they? But you need, a, don't you need a bit of decorum to go shopping anywhere? Turning up in your pyjamas, I think it's disgusting. What do you think? Do send us a message, put a little message under here perhaps, or you can email in, boys and girls, my email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Question for you. Right, just a moment, please. Let me just go to my prepared items over here. Oh, so. Regular viewers of this programme will know that I gave my um, my brother-in-law, my sister's um, uh, husband, a, a couple of, of my old computers. Uh, over the Christmas time. They've been sitting around here for ages, have no more use for them anymore, but quite high spec. They were, one was about four or five years old, but it was quite high spec. I think it had an i7 in it or something like that, I think they're called, and another one as well. But uh, if I give away a computer, I never give away the hard drive. This has got probably passwords and all sorts of bits and pieces on there, my darlings. So I have these two hard drives. Now, I, I don't know how hard drives fail. The question is, how do I destroy these two hard drives? Now, I've tried before, not with these particular ones, um, by drilling holes in it. 
it is so difficult to drill a hole in a hard drive. And I've, I've destroyed metal drills trying to do this. So do we have any computer people out there who will tell me how, what is the best way to totally physically destroy a hard drive? Because I don't want people getting hold of my bank details. Secrets and information that I carry on these two hard drives here. What do I do? Shall I bury them like 25 foot down? But then in years to come, you know, when they start digging up and they they, they, they fight, they dig up old bodies and things like that, don't they? Uh, they might come across one of these and there all my bank details will be exposed to the world to see. Exposed. So what do I do? How do you destroy a hard drive? If you have any information on that, if you've done that yourself, Please, please do let me know, and uh, perhaps we could actually destroy, try destroying one of these in one of our, re in one of our future programs. That could be a uh, a feature, a feature of the show, destroying hard drives. Just, just an idea. Now, talking about the future again in the paper this morning, a zombie outbreak could come close to wiping out humanity in a hundred days. Zombies could actually come. Yes. I mean, there's a few of them out there now. Today, I've already been out to the shops, cycling. Da, 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 da. Oh, that looks like a zombie over there. They do, don't they? People look like zombies. Anyway, it says, zombie could, Zombies could exterminate humanity in less than six months, according to recent research. Uh, researchers in, in the Daily Mail this morning uh, developed a complex new formula which, which calculates... <laughs> I mean, how do they know this crap? How do they know this? Uh, which calculates that 100 days into a zombie outbreak, over just over 100 survivors will be left uninfected. Are we are. Are we in? Who's in? Are you infected? I'm infected. Are you infected? Terrible, dear. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Dear. Um, some students have developed some blooming mathematical... They sit there. Rather than learn about things what are going on, they sit there and come out with these mathematical formulas that mean nothing to anyone, do they? These blooming students, honestly. Uh, they claim that while their results are interesting, the data they used is not perfect. Well, of course it's not perfect. And you know we're ever going to get zombies. Walking around, Ooh, mind you, oh, if you've got a mobile phone, then you probably are already a zombie, aren't you? Walking across the uh, who, who is going, beep, beep, uh, still unable to, to work out what's going around you. So that's the zombie. I think it's very quiet. Now, information has been given by so-called experts on how to survive the zombie apocalypse from neuroscientists. They're the people that deal with brains, aren't they? Yes. So here we go. Scientists have dubbed the condition of being zombie as conscious deficit hypoactivity disorder. Oh, that would be the politically correct way of doing it, won't it? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Remember, no. <laughs> Some already the politically correct have got in on this one, haven't they? So uh, but you're not allowed to call anyone a zombie. OK, because they might be offended. I'm offended. Oh, don't call me a zombie. I'm offended. Yeah, here we are. You've got to say they have a conscious deficit hypoactivity disorder or CDHD. You've got to have abbreviation. CDHD is, is what this is. <laughs> and, and no doubt one of the do-gooders will say, oh, oh, don't hurt them. You've got to talk to them what, while you're being eaten alive. You want me to talk to them? I don't think so. Yes. Uh, they describe it as an acquired syndrome in which infected people lack control over their actions. It's the voices. It's the voices that are telling me. The voices are telling me. Don't fight with zombies. Here's what to do. Don't fight. Zombies wouldn't have the neural responses to care about pain. So unless you could shoot to kill, it would be best to run for it. <laughs> I think I could run quite a fair distance or walk fast, you know, because I do do quite a lot of, uh, of walking and swimming. I'm going to go swimming actually after this. Uh, keep quiet. Keep very quiet. Zombies with CDHD would have very little memory and poor concentration. So if you hid like a cat, 
Something else would likely capture their attention, keeping you safe. Or it might be the old, you know, hide behind a bush and start throwing a stone over there, you know, so that they look over that way. And then they go over there and you can run for it. I don't think zombies would be able to run very fast. You know, in those films, zombies of living dead and all that business, they don't seem to move very fast, do they? Have you noticed that? And distract them. Damage to zombies, posterior, partial parietal cortex would mean that they couldn't concentrate and would be at the mercy of whatever grabs their attention. Try fireworks for a quick getaway. <laughs> I think I'd be unlikely to throw my cat at them. <laughs> they couldn't do much. Cats, you can't hurt a cat, dear. <laughs> Scratching away. Don't try to reason with a zombie. CDHD presents with massive dysfunction of the language circuits in the brain. This means that zombies can't understand what you're saying. <laughs> a bit like listening to this show, really. Nor can they talk back, the neuroscientist warned. Their fight reaction would dominate, leaving you pleading with a hungry, angry zombie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, they want to eat you up and mimic them. Pretend to be a zombie. Zombies wouldn't be able to recognise faces, so they clearly identify each other by movements and sounds. If confronted with a herd of the undead with no clear avenue of escape, do what Sean and his friends did in Shaun of the Dead. Act like a zombie. Do it with enough accuracy and you can wander through the herd undetected, the researchers said. Well, that's, that'd be quite easy for some of you watching this, wouldn't it? You look like zombies. Oh, uh, 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 uh. Perhaps we should have a zombie night at one of the venues I do. Where all my singers could come up and pretend to be zombies. Just a thought, just a thought. Let's do today's birthdays, boys and girls. Happy birthday today to... Oh, it's my friend Frank. My friend... Oh, I haven't seen for ages and ages, Frank. Frank is flying the world, aren't you, Frank? Happy birthday to Frank today. Happy birthday to... Uh, Kin. My little friend Kin. Hydro Kin. I haven't seen you for a couple of weeks at the at the uh, at the at, at the karaoke. <laughs> it said something else. At the karaoke, where have you been, Kin? We need your stunning voice at our nights. Come along Friday night. Happy birthday today to Chris Clark, sixty-two years uh, uh, sixty-two years old today. Happy birthday, Chris. Um, now, are you the chap doing the um, uh, the whole black cap thing? I'm not sure. I think you might be. Ooh, not sure. Just a moment, please. Let me check that out. Because there is a Chris Clark who's doing, uh, trying to get the Black Cat reopened. Let's have a look. There we are. We are the Black Cat. Is it you, Chris? Is it you? It is! Oh, it is! I thought it was you. Keep at it, Chris. Keep at it. Chris is uh, uh, leading a thing to, to help try and reopen the Black Cat. So happy 62nd birthday to you today, Chris. Happy birthday to Luke Nanny. Uh, Luke was a regular at the Black Cap, actually, years ago. He's doing quite well. Happy birthday, Luke. Uh, Laura Hillenar, 27 today. Lovely picture of you, Laura. Uh, Dawn Davidson to Mark Alexander to Lee Warren to Frank Stegner uh, to Edward Stanton, 31 today. Happy birthday, Edward. Oh, Topless pictures of you, Edward. I can't look. Oh, perhaps I can. There we are. Very nice, Edward. Very nice. Carlos Rabato de Lima. What a lovely name. Happy birthday to you. To Bill Sharkley. Sharky, 49 today. And to... Uh, oh, that's it. Luke. Luke's there again. Uh, you, you've got two profiles, Luke. Luke and uh, Frank have got two profiles. Frank is, is 32 years old. That was my favourite age, I think. 30, between 32 and 47 was my favourite age. 32, I think, was probably my favourite age um, uh, out of how old I am at the moment. Is that, is that correct, how you would say that? I don't know. Anyway, happy birthday to you all, boys and girls, OK? <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Have a wonderful day, boys and girls, whatever you're doing. OK, tonight it's Thursday night. I'll be doing some DJing this evening at uh, the Two Brewers in Clapham. If you want to pop in there and stay hello, starts at 10 o'clock and finishes at, oh, it might be 3 o'clock. 
It's either two or three o'clock tonight, OK? So that's where I am out tonight. Uh, have a lovely Thursday. Have you seen? Did you notice I've had me out? I've been on my bike today already to Wokenham and had me air cut. I got caught short on the way home and I was actually lucky that the church was open. I was able to pop in there and use the toilet in church. See, you, you, if, you, if you're a member, if you're a member, you can just pop in any church. If you're not a member, I'm afraid you can't use our toilets. Have a nice Thursday and I'll see you soon. Cheerio.